Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be learning about this simple strategy that will help you to turn anything of life into a lesson, into a school that you can actually extract practical lessons to every area of your life. This is going to take the study of the Word of God to a whole new level. This is going to take your ability to extract practical lessons from God's Word unlike you've ever seen in your life before. This is one of uh, the highest strategies that when I learned this, it's like the whole world began to open up with possibilities to uh, be able to study and understand. So uh, what we call this is, uh, we call this the remix strategy. And what is the principle behind this is that, uh, is that basically if you want, um, it, well, it boils down to the seven areas of life first. So um, we're going to look, I, I want to put this in context for you. We can have over here, um, there are the seven areas of life. Number one, what are the seven areas of life? Who would like to share? Um, spiritual. So, so we, we got, got physical. physical. And number two. Spiritual. Got yeah. intellectual. And number three, we got spiritual for sure. And and uh, you just took a picture so you could look at it if, if it, everyone has access to it. So what what's number four? Calling. This, this is calling. calling. Yes. So, so you, you have, have your, your occupation, your business. Your it's what you do, what you spend your time with. This is your calling. Then number, number five, five. What do we have for number five? Financial. Do we have someone else other than Tina? Yes. So we got financial over here. These are these are the different areas of life that we that um, I want to help you to apply the remix strategies to. What about number six? Social. Yes, we got social. This is your your friends. This is your relationships. This is the people that you know, and it's through the social interactions that the gospel is carried to the world. So this is also evangelism. What about seven? Family. Yeah, we got family. This is, this family could include your spouse, it could be your parents, this could be your household. This is, these are the seven areas of life. And what I want us to see in context is hopefully to help, my, my goal is to help you in all seven areas to be able to, to live the life that God has called you in all the areas and yes God has a plan for your physical health your your physical life God has a plan for your intellectual your learning your emotional health your your um, your mental health God has a plan for each of these things um, and there are there are principles in finance that we can learn and I was really thinking about it recently is uh, finances did you know that you have a financial IQ that each one of us have a certain degree of like financial understanding and the Word of God has a lot of counsel regarding finances but your bank account is a reflection of simply the education that you have based on the finances to understand how do finances come how do you manage finances when you have it what do you um, how do you invest the finances rather than spending it when you see what the Word of God says about finances what what does money mean uh, what is what is the good use of money for? Uh, the reason why uh, many people are poor is because they spend money as soon as they get it. There is literally cause and effect relations of finances that when we understand and the laws that govern our finances, then we will reap the um, the the benefits or the consequences based on obeying or violating. And it's the same thing with our social life. If we want to have friends. Proverbs says a man that half friends must show himself what? Friendly. Friendly. So there are, there's a science to being friendly. There's a science to having conversation, to speaking to people, communicating, to, to showing care and connecting with others. And when you understand that science, the strategies, the, the <laughs> principles, then you will be able to under, you'll be able to have the friends that support you, that encourage you, that, that are going in the same direction as you. 
Uh, Proverbs says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. So we want to, uh, we want to look at this remix strategy over here. Now, um, basically what this concept is, now originally I learned this in terms of publishing. So as in calling, my calling is, um, like I'm a publisher, that's what I do. Um, I, take, I take the things that I learn in the public and from the Word of God and experience and then publish it and share it on um, social media, YouTube, videos, podcasts, different places. So that's why we have the Army of Youth as a publishing organization, a publishing ministry to service those who recognize that God has called them for something greater than themselves. They have called them to a higher service to contribute and impart the gifts. So we want to equip those who are equipping others, to train those who are training others, to influence the influencers. And in doing this, I was, um, I was taking a course that was really powerful, and it was talking about how um, you can apply uh, whatever your niche is or, or your specific topic, your category that you are teaching or, or sharing content on, um, then you, like for instance, if, um, if we have a burden for ministry and evangelism, if we only look within the ministry uh, categories of, of, um, of like publications on like Facebook, Instagram, social media, wherever, then we're going to be limited to the ideas and possibilities and different types of messages or content or formats uh, that could be used. So what they were saying is like, get out of your niche and gather inspiration. Gather what? Inspiration. Gather inspiration from other areas. <laughs> Um, inspiration. So they were they were explaining how you can you can look at, for instance, a um, a cooking class or I mean a um, a niche that is talking about cooking and they do like food photography and and um, even though in ministry we're not a uh, food like we're we're not teaching like cooking classes uh, for the army of youth but we teach people who teach cooking classes. But um, you can learn from their videos, just you can understand their style, you can see their setup, you can understand some principles there and, and remix those, um, those principles and apply them to the context of what we are doing. And, it, and it's a really powerful idea where um, it was basically, a, it was a course on virality and what are the eight traits of virality, what makes videos go viral. And the key is instead of just starting from scratch, take something that has already been successful, that you know it has gotten millions of views or that it has reached millions of people and you can see that in, in the format, there's a reason why um, and you just kind of take that, and you don't copy it, you don't like copy the messaging, you don't copy the, the words, the title and everything, but you're, you're remixing it, you're modeling it, you're saying what how can I, I copy the, the f format or model the, uh, the concept of it? Um, there's some people who, I'll give you an example, there's some people who um, are like political people and they go to the streets and they interview random people at, in the streets and say, hey, what do you think about our current president? And then they are like, when was America uh, founded? And then they could, they could interview these people and those videos get millions of views in the political world. But that's the political niche. Let's say you're in a ministry evangelism niche. Well, some ministries have taken that model, that format, and they have taken it on the word, uh, on the streets, and they take prophecy and they interview people. It's like, so what do you understand? Who is the Antichrist? Or like, what do you understand about the last days? Or, or, what, or how does this relate to Bible prophecy? Whatever the case is, they're interviewing people on the streets, and those videos get get thousands and thousands and thousands of views, far more than the average ministry video that are just, if they're only looking at other people in your niche, in other ministry organizations, you're going to um, be limited. So when they were explaining this, I was like, whoa, wait a second. You know what that just did? That just unlocked all the possibilities for there's no limit to the different sources and, and ways that we can learn and gather um, ideas and inspiration from. So again, it's not copying, it is, it, it's, it's remixing. It's it just remixing the ideas, there, there's a difference. So, um, I'll give you an example. 
Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 25 and let's read verse uh, 8. So the story is Moses, he wants to build a sanctuary. He wants to build this system. But uh, what did Moses follow in order to build a successful sanctuary system? In uh, Exodus 25 verse 8 and 9. Can I get a volunteer to read this for us? 25? Yeah, Exodus 25, verse 8 and 9. Okay. All right, thank you. It says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So he was, go he was to create it according to the what? According to the pattern. According to the pattern. Now, what I want you to notice, I want you to understand the principle of patterns because leaders are masters at recognizing patterns of, of, of using patterns, utilizing them, recognizing and utilizing them. You can see a pattern in all the different content. You can see a pattern in, in uh, what, what Moses did is he had a pattern in order to build the sanctuary from. And what I would submit to you is that your life is like a building. What building are you going to build and what foundation are you going to lay? It all depends um, if you, what was beautiful about Moses when he was building this, this building or this, this tabernacle, he, by following a pattern, he was able to do it right the first time without making any mistakes. And it saved him so much time and wisdom of his limited knowledge where he already found a successful pattern and he just modeled those steps. It wasn't an exact replica, but it was a, mo a miniature model which allowed him to save him so much trial and error. So in like manner, your life is like a building and you want to think you have your body is like the temp is a temple of God in 1 Corinthians 3:16. You want to ask how are you going to build this tabernacle? What kind of body, what kind of physical health, what kind of um, what kind of freedom physically do you want to experience in life? Do you like me like when I'm 6 years old I want to be able to run up a mountain and not have to be uh, sitting down while everyone else is having fun around me or, or not be able to run with my children. I want to have the physical ability, the freedom that I can exercise when I want to. So that's, a, that's, a, a, uh, that's an outcome that I want in life. So what do I have to do? I have to look, who is someone who's in their 60s that can run up mountains, that, could, um, that is healthy, that is fit, that is, and find out what they did. That is a pattern of what... Um, Timothy says, uh, it's actually very interesting, it says in, in oh, Titus chapter 2, 7, it talks about a pattern of good works. And you don't have to, you don't have to write that down, but um, that's Titus uh, 2, 7, a pattern of good works. And so you see, what did they do? Find out what they did and do that and model some of those principles. They probably ate healthy. Maybe they had a regular sleep. They followed the laws of health and... and you can see whatever it is, you can identify what are, or like, like when it comes to social. For a long time, I was an awkward um, high schooler, played a lot of video games, sat in front of a screen, didn't talk to people in person. So my social skills were extremely limited. My communication was terrible. I didn't even talk to my family very much. I didn't have friends um, really at school or outside of school. And one summer, it's like, I just didn't talk to people so much, I developed a speech impediment. It was so bad. And so my social abilities were super weak. But what did I have to do? I had to look, who are those who have the results that I want? Who have the social skills? Who are the evangelists? Who are the people who are winning souls? The Bible says, he that wins souls are wise in Proverbs 11. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to be an evangelist. So what did I do? I looked for uh, those who have evangelism experience and I went with them to go get Bible studies. And I observed my Bible worker partner and I saw how he would respond in, when people disagreed with him, how he'd respond and, and communicating in a way people would receive. And the way I was going to do it was totally different. But because I had a pattern, 
I was able to learn in months what took him years to learn. You can pack decades into days by following a pattern and just remixing that for, for my personality and who I am and, and being able to communicate that. So that's, that's what I, I want you to see is that leaders recognize patterns. Whatever result you want in all areas of life, find a pattern and model that, yes? Even with like sharing the gospel with others, um, if you look at business principles, persuasion principles, you can really, really uh, understand more than if you were just like limited to um, what you have. That yeah. is so, so true. true. Very, Very true. true. Um, the, um, I, I completely agree. And we can see, we can, I do want to, I want to dive more into uh, the, the business, side, business principles or patterns that you could see. And I'm going to show you straight from the word. No, it's, it's good. It's a good comment. I'm going to show you from the word of God how Jesus used business principles and applied it to sharing the gospel and, and spiritual things. And you'll understand, hopefully, a greater clarity here. Um, but what was the pattern that Moses used? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. Can I get a different volunteer to read this one for us? All right, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> Hebrews 8, 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mouth. So Hebrews 8, 5 says that Moses was given a pattern of what? Wait, wait. Example and shadow of heavenly things. What kind of things? Heavenly things. Heavenly things. So the pattern that Moses had was the pattern of heaven. He was modeling the sanctuary in heaven. And you know what that means? Because he was following the pattern of, um, of heaven, he was actually able to, um, he, he was able to, to uh, just pack and condense several millenniums into days. His, uh, his effort was able to expand upon the millenniums of God's infinite wisdom. So I want to encourage you in dealing with your seven areas of life, what is, ask yourself, what is God's, uh, how can we closely, more closely model our life after the pattern of heaven? Then we'll be able to have heavenly success in all areas. What pattern has heaven given us for our family? What pattern has heaven given us for our calling. Look at the work that you do, the effort you put in, as it relates to eternity. What pattern has God given us for our education, for our learning, for the information that we receive? What pattern has God given us for our health? And when you allow yourself to see, like really, when, when you're looking for a model, when you're looking for making decisions or you see outcomes that you want, you see some things that you're unsatisfied in life and you're like, how can I um, improve these different areas of my life? What pattern could I use? Uh, could I follow? And um, then you will, uh, when you compare it with heaven, it will help tremendously. Yes, you want to say something? In regards to, like, if you start, I was just thinking about the, the tabernacle. If God would have just told Moses, Moses, build me a sanctuary, and he had to start from scratch, like, not God not giving him an example, that would have been so hard, and we, we don't really, like, you know, you don't really know where to start, okay, well, we just this building, but you don't really know the structure, but God gave him, like, specific things. So if we look at other people's examples, we, we know, we don't have to start from scratch every single time. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's exactly saves right. Saves a lot of stress, overwhelm. Absolutely. The remix strategy uh, can transform our lives. So there, there's some other things that we can pattern. Um, we can definitely pattern the example of Christ. We can see 
that He has left us an example. We could pattern things of nature. Did you know that many inventions in, in today that we take for granted and so fundamental to society, so beneficial to humanity, was actually just patterned after nature? Think about um, the lens, the camera lens that we are using right now to communicate. That was modeled after the human eye. By studying and understanding how the eye works, man was able to create a lens so that you and I could have this conversation together. That was pattern after nature. And that and so many other successful uh, inventions that have transformed this world was a, the result of studying nature. And just out of curiosity, I want to understand more examples. Please let me know in the comments section uh, what was an ex another invention that you know of that has transformed the world that was patterned from something in nature. I heard that there's something to do with hummingbirds or maybe helicopters. There's there all sorts of different uh, things that in inventors got from nature, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Yes? You know, we always go out in nature and we look for, I mean, um, we look for object lessons. And I think that's, that's kind of like the roommate strategy too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, object lessons. Parables. All object lessons are, is using uh, the remix strategy. And what I want to, um, I want us to see is that all the parables of Christ, those were, uh, was really just following the remix strategy. And uh, because what he did is he took like two things that have nothing to do with each other and mixed them together mm -hmm. and remixed them and, and allowed and gathered spiritual lessons from each of these and what I want you to see is that spiritual lessons is just one of the seven areas of your life. I want to challenge you to take from, you could take from any industry, any occupation, any field and you can understand, um, you can understand physical lessons from that experience, like from health. You can understand social lessons from your relations for people. You could, like, like the parable, of the sower went forth to sow. So Jesus talked about how sowing the seed brought, um, there's different kinds of uh, people that you had the seeds. And the seed was the what? What did the seed, re it was the word of God. So seed represents words. Now you can apply that parable spiritually that when you study the word of God, he, he, there's the, depending on the condition of our heart, the soil will determine whether God's word bears fruition. So you can also recognize that socially you have words, you have interactions, you have conversations with people and that doesn't, and not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to receive you. Not everyone is going to use what you share, what you say. So it's, it's a, uh, depending on the condition of their heart, depends on the friends that you really start to have. But does, does that mean that you quit sowing seed? No, you continue to have more conversations, you develop more friends, even financially. Financially, there are sales principles from the sower that went forth to sow, that as you sow the seed, that the word could be sales messages. That could be, if you have a product or a service that could make a profound impact in the lives of others, uh, then uh, you, then, you know, sometimes you, you share your sales with people, but not everybody purchases. But it's again, it's dependent on the soil, the condition of their heart, the timing is, is so important. You can go through down the list of the seeds that you sow. It, it depends on the condition of the heart. So what I want you to see is that in the remix strategy, you are able to learn lessons from life in all seven areas. Not just spiritual, not just physical, but all seven areas. And these things are, are just going to open the Word of God. And I would submit to you that the Bible is as much practical as it is spiritual. Mom, did you want to say something? No. No, no not anymore? No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what that science is called when you use nature to create something. Oh, okay. okay. And, um, yeah, so we have... We can pattern after um, after Christ. We can also pattern after Christ's representatives. Because God has given us representatives. And um, now there is a, a principle that we, do, we definitely do not want to model um, 
we don't want to follow the bad example of others, but the Bible does say that we should follow the good example. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 and I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 16. Can I get a 1 Timothy 1.16? Who would like to read this for us as soon as you get there? I will. Thank you. How that for this cause I obtained mercy, but in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to live everlasting. So who's speaking? Who wrote this letter to Timothy? Paul. Paul did. So Paul is representing who? Christ. Christ. So he is saying that I've, uh, that I've gone through this experience so that I can be a pattern to uh, them which should hereafter believe on Christ. So what you have to recognize is that whether you recognize, own, or um, however you feel about it, people are following your example. You are a pattern to other people and they are looking to you to understand what Christ is like to them. We do it all the time. Children pattern after their parents financially. Mm -hmm. Children pattern after their families socially. A lot of times. My mom didn't really like socialize with a lot of people and we kind of were a homebody. So that was, uh, those were the skills that I, I patterned. I modeled a lot of behavior socially with my mom. And, and she patterned those behaviors with what pattern she had growing up. So um, a lot of times our family, the family principles, we have to realize that there are patterns. And sometimes we can have healthy patterns and we can have unhealthy patterns. Just because we're following a pattern doesn't mean that we're going, that it's a good one. But every result in your life, I, I'm gonna, I, I, wanted, I want to train your mind to think on outcomes. Think of the results that you want in life, or as the, the Jesus example of the sower of the seed. W- uh, finish the sentence, Galatians 6, 7. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also what? Reap. Reap. So if you don't like a fruit in your life, fruit is a result, it's an outcome, what do you need to s- change? The seeds. The seeds. So I can't plant a tomato and be upset that I didn't harvest watermelon. If I plant a tomato, I will invariably, without exception, get a tomato plant. So likewise, in all seven areas, your, your bank account is a reflection of the financial seeds that you have sowed. Your friendship circle, the people you surround yourself, the leaders who are in your life, the mentors who are there to help you, the people who you are taking under your wing, the the friends, the support you have is a reflection of the seeds that you sow. Your uh, Your minds, whether the emotions that you have, every feeling is a fruit, it's a result. It's a result of the seeds and the seeds that, that create the emotions is your words, your focus, your movements, and we've done trainings on that before, but it's the seeds that you sow that will reap the fruit of, of joy, love, peace, happiness, all the fruit of the Spirit, um, all these things. So if you change your seed, you'll change your fruit. And I say that because um, a lot of times, we, we get these patterns, when we follow the wrong pattern, we will, um, we will get these outcomes that we're unhappy with in life and we don't want, and we don't know how to change them. So what you want to do is with the remix strategy, look for patterns. And you could look like even in gar- agriculture, that could be your calling. I mean, that's an occupation, that's like people are farmers, they're dedicated to be gardeners. But you can learn from any occupation principles that can be applied to all areas of your life by remixing them. Are you guys following with me? Let, let's see this uh, a little bit more. So these are, the reason I brought that up is because some people, are, you want to, um, 
You want to listen to the advice of the, of the people who have the results that you want. Look at people with the outcomes. Like I, I understand my family did not have the, the financial concepts, so I'm not going to model my behavior after our family. I have to find other financial mentors, other financial principles in God's Word, and other financial sources to understand how, finance, how to manage them, how to handle them, how to increase them, just different, what are high income producing skills to develop. And these are, uh, and you can learn these. It's all, it's all just based on the seeds that you sow in your mind, the words, the education, the things that you learn. Um, so uh, change your pattern, change your life. And uh, so let, let's look at some other uh, sources Jesus gave the example in, um, okay, what word did Jesus use to describe the ministry of his life calling? Turn with me to Luke 2 and verse 49. What did Jesus use to describe his ministry? Oh, this is going to open up a world of possibilities for you. If you pray about it, if you allow it, if you're open. Uh, Luke 2.49, who would like to read this for us? Okay, okay go, go ahead. ahead. Alright, it says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my Father's business? So, so what, did, what word did Jesus use to describe his ministry? Business. But well, whose business is it? Business. It's his father's business. He is on a heavenly mission. His calling is he's in the business of winning souls. But what we find there is that business and ministry are not two separate things. They are one. Business, there's a lot of business principles that can be applied to ministry. Now that doesn't mean that you want to... Um, you want to like take advantage of people and their finances just through ministry but like when you understand true business is of heavenly origin and I'll, I'll show you we could look a little bit more um, what is God what, what has God given to us as a vehicle for serving the Lord you're here chances are if you're listening to this you want to serve Christ you want to enlist in Christ's service but God has given you a vehicle so that you can serve Christ at the highest level. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. We will see what is God's plan for serving Him. Mom, can you read this for us? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. What did, what did uh, God just connect with serving the Lord? Yeah, business. So when, when conducted correctly, your business is your vehicle for serving Christ. Your business is the means to an end of, of sharing Christ with the world. Your business is what's a, or your source of income, your occupation, your training, your calling. You're not just called to live life here on earth to to get a good paying job, to raise your family, get a good education, and then die. You're called for Christ. You're called to serve. And your business, your calling, your occupation, what you spend your time doing, that should be a means to financially support the calling that God has on your life. And you can live your calling when you understand some of these principles. So, and when you really look at it, the entire uh, Jewish nation, back in the Old Testament, the way that God originally set things up, it was the Israel was basically an entire nation of entrepreneurs and business owners. It was actually considered a sin to allow a child to grow up without knowing some sort of trade. And the trades that people had, they weren't working for individuals uh, and corporations and large companies. The guy who was a, a smith or a blacksmith like the guy with the last name is Smith, their last name often denoted the business of their family, their family business. So um, like a Smith, like John Smith, he was likely John, he was the blacksmith, he was the goldsmith, or he was the, 
the silversmith. That, that's what they did. Or the, um, someone who, with the last name of Sawyer, he worked at the sawmill. That's what he did. Or a uh, tailor, they, he was someone who mended clothing. And it was their last name reflected their, their occupation, their business. And in America, when America was started, America was founded on biblical principles. And there's statistics where the 90% of Americans in our earlier days, they were business owners. But now it has shifted in this industrial age where people are starting to be employed for these big corporations. So entrepreneurship is a principle of Christianity. It's a foundational principle. Christ was an entrepreneur. Christ was a business owner. His father was what? A carpenter. He was a carpenter. And he was a carpenter's son. He, he labored as a carpenter for 30 years as a business owner before he engaged in ministry. And when Jesus started his ministry, um, he looked for business owners. And I, I'll show you that in a moment. But in order to, under, to wrap your mind around that, um, let's look. In ancient times, um, what were the businessmen called um, in the scriptures? Turn with me to Psalms 107, verse 23. And if you notice, Psalms 107, 23, and if you notice how I'm remixing some of these watchwords, and in order for us to understand, the Bible is talking about business, but a common word today is entrepreneurship. See, so yeah, entrepreneurs is a word that's a modern terminology, but it's the same principles. They're just, they're remixed and they're applied. So Psalms 107 verse 23. Common, could you read this for us? In ancient times, what, what were, were the, the businessmen business called? called? What, what, what vehicle, vehicle did, did the businessmen business use? It says, they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. So, so what, did, what, what vehicle, vehicle did they, they use for business? business? Ships. Ships, ships. alright. So, so now, um, turn with me, who were the first disciples that Jesus called to His service? Turns me to Matthew 4, 18. Mm. You're here because you want to dedicate your talents to Christ's service. And you want to... Um, you want to say, here I am, Lord, send me. And God is calling for youth to dedicate their lives, their talents, their time, their resources to Christ's service. But look at what Christ did in uh, choosing uh, disciples for a service. I noticed someone was unmuted. Um, so I'm going to, if you unmute yourself again, I, I could call on you. I forgot. I, didn't, I missed who it was. But um, Matthew 4, 18... Um, who would like to who would like to read this one for us? I will. Thank you. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. They were fishers. Also Levi Matthew. Levi Matthew, what was he? Yeah, he was a tax collector. He was a tax collector. He dealt in the financial industry. But those, those financial, financial principles also, like he was, um, yeah, there are principles that can be applied. But not only this, notice, did Jesus remix business principles to learn and teach ministry concepts? Read the next, can you read the next verse for us, Sister Kathy? I'd be happy to. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. And who, who were the ships and the fishers? They were the, the businessmen. Business so, so when he's talking about fishing for men, this is a business terminology. This is a business principle. And in like manners, even businesses today, they still use fishing terminology in order to, um, to teach, like online marketing or online business. They talk about, like, well, I mentioned before, like, I'm a publisher. I do publishing. This is what we do. And... Um, in publishing, there is, uh, at the beginning of every video, there's something called a hook story offer. There's a hook. And what you want to do is you want to hook their attention. You, it, when you're writing a book, the, first, the cover is a hook. The, the first few sentences is a hook. The first seven seconds of a video is a hook. That is so essential that if your hook is bad, then you won't capture their attention. 
So like manner, what, what do fishermen use if they're using a fishing pole? They're using a big hook. So it's, it's talking about the fish. And even when, um, when you read business principles, there's like a, a business how to, um, well, there's business principles that uh, they talk about where are your ideal, um, your ideal clients that you want to serve, you want to help. And they, they talk about them in, as in ponds or as in pools. They have like a very famous book that's called a blue ocean strategy or a red ocean strategy. And it's like red ocean is where there's a lot of sharks and there's a lot of competition and, and there's a lot of bloody waters and oceans because of all of the businesses um, that are there. Or there's a blue ocean strategy where you go into a niche and you specialize into one category and you serve a very unique group of people because the internet allows us to connect with so many people from all over the world and when you niche down then you've created your own area that you can go fishing all day long and you're not competing with all the sharks this is a blue ocean strategy so this is what this is an extremely popular business book i haven't read it but it's on my list of books to read but um w but my point of saying this is when you remix these are parables and God is, is showing us how with the remix strategy we can understand from business principles how they apply to ministry and spiritual lessons. So how does the blue and the red ocean fit in ministry? Well, with the Army of Youth, as we are starting a ministry and we're looking, what are we going to do? How are we going to serve people? What, how are we going to use our talents for Christ? I had to look and I was seeing, well, and I, was, I didn't have the blue and red ocean mindset, but I went through this process where it's basically, what are the ministries that already exist? And I see that there are some ministries that do things incredibly well. Like for instance, you got Amazing Facts. They do really good with some basic Bible studies and they break down what the basic principles of the Word of God are. And I realized like that's their ministry and they do so well. Why reinvent the wheel? Why do what they do when Amazing Facts does it tremendously? They've been a blessing in my life. Or there is, like you have Amazing Discoveries with Walter Vyeth and, and he breaks down the science of creation. He has ministry where he exposes the darkness and the errors and he does a really good job there. And I've been blessed by the ministry. But in the Army of Youth, what kind of content messages are we going to be sharing? Why reinvent the wheel? They do that so well. Little Light Studios is another example. They expose the, the media ministry, the video games, and, and the Hollywood, and, and I've been blessed by them too, but they're already doing that, so why do what they're doing? What is something that the Army of Youth can uniquely do? Who is a blue ocean audience that we have not served, or that is not really being served by other places, that how can we create a niche that does not compete with the existing ministries or organizations, but actually complements them. And what we realize is, well, in the army of youth, looking at my skills, what I have, I understand evangelism, and I understand, um, I understand like business principles, those are entrepreneurship, I'm passionate about that. I understand technology, technology and tools and publishing, those are things that, that I see that God has called me to do. So what if we, we blended ministry with entrepreneurship, and technology with publishing tools, modern publishing, and put these together. And if we can share principles with the youth to help them to, to identify their calling, their life's definite aim, and then give them the tools, the principles of success that could equip them not to do their ministry, not for us to do their ministry, but so that they can live their calling, help other organizational leaders and ministries and and people who are servicing others and it trained them and we realized what ministry is out there that has been around for years that understands ministry principles that is actually teaching people how to do what they did i don't really know of very many ministries doing that i see a lot of schools that are teaching uh, bible classes and teaching and they'll do evangelism but very few I don't actually know of any that is actually equipping people to uh, mentor them and train them and help them to understand the financial side of ministry, the social uh, networking and relationship building that you need, the skills for ministry, how to balance your family and ministry and your service to the world, how to, under, how to study the Bible. A lot of ministries teach what the Bible says, 
but who is teaching how to find what the Bible says? That's where we're going to go into that blue ocean. So what we've done as a ministry is we're here not to tell you what to do or what the Bible says per se, but we're here to show you how to find what the Bible says because you're able to learn things so much more than me. I could be greatly limited in my understanding, but if if you're equipped with the biblical principles to study God's Word and understand, then you will be, you'll be able to go so much further than I ever could if you continue to follow Christ's pattern for all areas of your life. Does this make sense? So these are, yes. these are business principles that we could remix in ministry and see how they apply. Now, what we have to do in order to do this... Um, Hmm. One of the things that we have to do is uh, we have to understand the... Um, I'm looking at my time because there's not much time left, but I'm, I'm seeing this. Uh, one thing that I want to show you is in order to remix things, it will be extremely helpful for you to um, identify um, watchwords. Now, what is a watchword? Would someone like to explain watchword? This is something we use often here. Um, I can try. Go for it. <laughs> oh, well, what a watchword is, is it's a word that um, has like a whole... It's kind of like in a specific niche, um, a word that when someone says it, everyone understands it. But if you're not really part of that niche, you don't really understand. Like when we say like the heavenly sanctuary or like the, the sanctuary message, um, we all know what it means. But there's some people that do not. It's because it's, they don't. I guess it's like the terminology. Yeah, the terminology. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, That's a, a very good, good description. Thank you for sharing that. And watchword is also like this is from the niche of military. It's a military pa password. The watchmen on the walls of Zion, they would, be, they would go up and in Isaiah, the question is, watchmen, what are the knights? That is for those who are standing on the walls and they were protecting the city and they're looking, they were supposed to respond what? The night cometh. Yes, yes the, the morning, morning cometh and also the nights. So, so if they, they didn't respond, they knew they were sleeping on the job and they would die. Or there's some sort of military password that if you didn't know how to pronounce or what it is, they know that you're a spy, you're an enemy, you're not from around here, you're not part of our military, you are someone else. So watchwords is what builds community. Yeah, the Bible gives that example of like how they pronounce the words. Yeah, it was like, I believe it was like Shibalek. And because the guy didn't know how to say it right, he's like, oh, you're an imposter and he killed him. And just like, that's what a watchword is. So in like manner, like, a very easy example is let's say I am a um, let's say I'm a mechanic. That's my that's my calling, and um, I I put on a white um, coat. I I have a stethoscope on. I've got the corona mask on my face, and I'm I'm like walking into a hospital, and I go to have a conversation with people. But you will know everyone in that hospital will know I don't belong there. Why? Just because of my conversation, my watchwords. They're trying to tell me to like go write stuff. They have all these codes and terminologies and words and I just look like confused because what do I know? I know, I know some ratchets and I know compressors. I know oils and grease and, and so it's a little different. Um, but the watchwords is what allows, uh, differentiates what community you're in. So what I want you to understand when you're remixing, pay attention to definitions. Pay attention to the words of that category, of that niche, of that community, of that occupation, of that um, source or whatever it might be. And you want to ask like, what is, what's the definition and what is a higher level? How can we go higher level with this? Um, and I'll give you a quick example. Um, let's say uh, an another way that we could remix is, um, let's look at the occupation in Matthew 4.4. Turn with me to Matthew 4.4. 4. Who would like to read this for us? Carmen, can you read it for us? Sure. 
Matthew 4, 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay, so Jesus is, is talking about bread, right? Now what occupation makes bread? A baker. A baker! Um, a, and, and you guys know people with the last name Baker? That's because they were business owners. And that's what they did. They were, they were bakers. So he's talking about bread, but he's remixing this. He's saying every time you see the word bread in the Bible, or when you eat bread on your table, what is this a symbol of? The Word, the word of God. The Word of God. Now, think... Um, so this is, this is surface. This is... Uh, you're, you're looking at symbols. Watchwords are, they're, they're, think of watchwords as kind of like symbols. Um, that once you understand a symbol is defined, you could use that anywhere um, in life. All seven areas. There's symbols for your physical health. There's symbols for your mental health. There's symbols throughout spirituality. There's watchwords for your calling, your occupation, your, your trade, your business, your industry. There are symbols for finances. There are, there are watchwords for your social skills, interactions, relationships. So look at bread equals the word of God. Now, question. What I want to train you is, is we're talking about higher level principles. And there's higher level and there's lower level. And lower level would be an example of like very specifics. It's just tactical. It's, techniques are temporary. Principles are permanent. We're looking for the high level principles that are permanent, that, that are transferable across every industry, that can be applied to all areas. Bread is very specific. When, um, but what is the higher level principle behind bread? Food. food. Thank you. So we've got the higher level principle is food, not just bread, but could all food be a symbol of 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 the word of god essentially or like any food in, in the scriptures like be a representative of of god's word yeah yes it can that's it's remix so but is it is food just a symbol of the word of god so this is we're, we're dealing spiritual here is it only limited to this area of life or or could words what's a higher level principle than of the word of god What's the principle here? Words. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yes, we got words. Now, you're going to see. This is a good exercise here to help you understand. So, what's higher level than, like, this is specific. This is only God's word. This is the Bible. This is what he's written. But the principle is words. Now, is there only, like, healthy food? No. No, there's some bad food. Now, is toxic, poisonous food a fit representation of God's Word? No. 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 So, when you're dealing with junk food, that symbolizes words. I mean, there's two sources of words. You have God's words, and you have the enemy's words. Yeah. And you have truth, like word is truth, and you have lies, error. You have, you have two types of beliefs. There is limiting beliefs of error, lies, and Satan's words. And there's liberating beliefs that the truth, when you know the truth, it makes you free. So it's liberating words, limiting words, scarcity. Limiting is like, I can't, I, um, I, I don't know, I don't have. It's focusing on what's missing. God's word is focusing on what you're grateful, what you have. It's more abundance. There, there's one scarcity mindset, one's abundant mindset. So these are principles. So there's two types of words here. Now you can understand, once you have the, the principle of the watchword, you can understand that this principle is not specific to one industry or one specific example. Now you know that the food you eat is, or I'll say the words that you hear is like the food that you eat. So you hear the principle, um, you are what you what? Eat. You are what you eat. But in reality, you could also say, you are what you, you hear, you are what 
You are the reflection of the words that you hear. And they could be true words or false words. They could be uh, God's word coming from Christ, God's representative, or it's like family. Your family is the result. Like, think about your family as like a body of Christ, right? It's a body. We're remixing the physical body with our family, and the family has a bunch of members, members of the family. So, if you are what you eat, then the food that you put into your body is going to reflect what you look like physically. We're remixing these two. So, in like manner, that is words. So what is the education that your family receives? What are the words that you say in your household? Are they kind words? Are they encouraging words? Are you showing appreciation? Or are you constantly criticized? Are you criticizing others? Are you fault finding? Are you complaining about what people are doing? Are you nagging like a continual dripping? What are the words? The, the, the environment that you make is based on the words. That is the food that you're feeding your family. You can have good quality physical food and terrible terrible uh, conversational food, the, the input that you put in your mind. And you can see, where are you learning from? It's like, on, you can learn through books, you are what you read. You can, you can learn from videos on, um, you can learn from videos on YouTube, on social media, on Facebook. Now, not everything on social media is trash. There's a lot of really good quality. This right here, what we're learning today is going to be posted all throughout social media. But on social media, you have a choice. What dish are you going to eat from? And you can see how this applies to shaping who your family is. You can see how the food, so as you're cooking up a storm, or how do you say, as you're cooking, you're preparing a meal um, that uh, it's like you're in the kitchen, you have the ingredients, you have a recipe. A recipe, the principle, it's like a pattern. Amen. You're following a pattern. If you want to bake a cake, you follow the pattern and you get the same repeatable result. So in like manner, you got recipes. And you can see what are the recipes in, biz uh, in business. That is systems, Sys uh, standard operating procedures. That's a recipe. What are the uh, recipes for um, education? You have curriculum, you have systems of, of learning, you have courses. Uh, these are all like recipes to get the same education. There's, um, but what I want you to see is if you identify the watchwords of the specific, if you go from the low tactical technique level to the higher strategy, the higher principle, the higher the permanent transferable principles, then you can start to see, well, what is the financial food that I eat? Because your, your bank account is going to be the result like, of the, the words. Like, so you're, you're training yourself words. There are some limiting, do, are there limiting beliefs about money? Oh, yes. If I believe that money is the root of all evil, what, what am I not going to want? Money. I'm not going to want money. If I believe that if I have money, it's going to corrupt me, then what am I not going to want? Money. Money. So it's the words, the food, the financial food you are eating will determine your, your financial health that you, ha that you have. So if I, if I believe that money is a transaction of the value that you put into the marketplace, the difference that you make in the lives of others, because every product is... Um, is solving a problem, then the more product you sell, the more problems you solve, which means the more value that you are bringing to the marketplace, therefore the more means. If I believe that dollars equals value to the marketplace, then how many dollars am I going to want? Or I'll phrase, how many lives would I want to change yeah. with my product or service? Yes. That is, that's going to change based on the food that you eat. If you're eating financial junk food, you're going to be financially unhealthy. If you're eating financially health food, you're in truth and, and, and like the Word of God, and you study what God's principles and His Word says regarding finances, that's going to be a different food and a different, different result in your health, financial health. So um, hopefully this is making sense. And that's just that one last nugget I wanted to leave with you. In closing is just um, what we see is... Today, what I want you to realize is that it, when you follow the remix strategy, you're not just limited to just spiritual like uh, sources. Jesus used fishing and business sources to understand spiritual lessons. You can under you can remix 
uh, concepts, principles from all seven areas of your life. When you're studying the Word of God, you can understand every verse in the Bible can be applied to your life socially. Every verse in, your, in the Bible can be applied to your family, can be applied to your finances, can be applied to your calling, your occupation, to understand who, you, who God has called you to be, your service and contribution in the world. Every verse in the Bible can be applied to your physical health, your mental mind, your health, your thoughts, your feelings. Um, and when you understand the remix strategy, then all life becomes learning. There are no limits to what God can instruct you in. There is no limits to who you can be in Christ Jesus. And when you apply, when you master the remix strategy, you can realize that you can start teaching like Jesus through parables. And the more examples and associations, the more you're able to look at a object, any object of life, and just say, hey, I can, take object, I can take lessons and apply it to all seven areas. Find out which area is causing the most pain. Which area do you have the most problems in? And you can start finding solutions by get, gathering inspiration from other sources. And one of the best ways for you to do that is tr look for patterns, utilize patterns, identify watchwords, look for the higher level principles of that watchword, and then once you've got that higher level, the highest level that you can go that's most transferable then it could be applied to every area of life. So that's what my challenge to you is to look for higher level principles. Ask God to instruct and to show you and remix these so that you can, you can live your calling and then make a bigger difference in the cause of God, in the marketplace, in the people's lives around you that God can serve through you. So I, um, I thank you for coming. If it's your desire to um, better understand these, the remix strategy and to apply these things to your life and to, to be open to the possibilities that are all around you, then I invite you to close with me with a word of prayer. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you very much for gathering us together and helping us to understand the remix strategy a little bit more clearly. Father, I pray that you will uh, you will open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds that we can see, that we can hear your voice. We can hear your voice in the thunder. We can hear, we can see your love in the opening of the bud so that we can understand through um, the lessons of our everyday um, responsibilities to our family, our responsibilities to our, um, to our financial responsibilities, that throughout all these you can intertwine these lessons of, of eternity and lessons of, of hope and encouragement and solutions to all, every problem that we can hear your voice of love speaking to us through each of these activities of our daily life that is saying come up higher come trust in me come abide in my love and um, help me to make you who I have called you to be we want to live up to our infinite potential in Christ Jesus we pray in his name Amen. 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 And I want to thank you so much for joining us um, for this, uh, this message. I, if you like this video, I encourage you to hit like, share it with someone else, um, and let me know in the comments section below uh, what are some of the connections that you see in being able to remix different principles. And because and, um, I'd love to hear more examples from you. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, this is going to be available on our podcast um, and YouTube as well. So subscribe to either of those if you want to have more videos like this in the future. And remember that leadership is a skill of influence. Nothing more, nothing less. If um, every man, woman, and child has influence. But the question is, are we using that influence to lead others to Christ?